Hello, listeners. This is Kat. Welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Deku Dio. This will be part three, chapter three, entitled No Exit. All right, night shift, listen up. Takahashi Shiori, the second shift attending, called. We just got word of a mass casualty event from one of our friends in emergency medical services. We have ten incoming trauma cases arriving in about 20 minutes. Ten? Izuku gasped. They only had four doctors and six nurses on shift. Corkless support group rented a bus for a day trip and were T-boned by a nearby villain who had gotten into a car chase with the police. The driver had a quirk that was sent to Musutafa Memorial. We were lucky that one of the EMTs was an ally of ours and knew to send the corkless patients to us. They were able to gather a couple volunteers to drive the patients here. Twenty minutes is a long time to wait before treating that kind of trauma. Would it have been better to let them take their chances with the hospital? Michi wondered. No way. Natsu crossed his arms. You're quirked, and still relatively new here, so you wouldn't be expected to know. But Musatafa Memorial has a blanket policy of refusing all quirkless patients, emergency or not. All that would have done is waste more precious time, and we don't have time to waste. Do we have any more info on what we're looking at? As of ten minutes ago, we had two red tags, five yellow tags, and three green tags. Of course, that could change during transportation, so be prepared for as many as seven red tags. As of this moment, we're putting the clinic on bypass, Takahashi ordered. Matsumura, put all our current patients on hold and do your best to keep them happy. Direct all incoming non-emergent cases to our sister clinic in Hosu. Incoming emergencies should be logged and tagged based on the field triage system. Aye, aye, Captain, Matsumura saluted. You got it. As for our nurses, Harada, you're on patient intake, Umeda, Azuma, and Aoki, exam bays 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Be prepared to move quickly when our patients arrive. We will try to direct no more than one red tag patient to each of you, and your stations to avoid overwhelming you, but no guarantees. Yes, Sensei. Umeda Subaru, Aoki Michi, Harada Eito, and Azuma Mari chorused. Yoshida-san, Takahashi began. Chances are we're going to have surgical patients. Scrub into the OR now. If for some reason we don't need an operating team, you'll be afloat. On it, Yoshida responded determinedly. W what about me? Kuwahara Hanako asked timidly. She was the youngest nurse, at just 13, and specialized in pediatrics. You're on medication dispensary and lab orders. Use a triage system. We have sparse resources to make sure that all restricted medication orders go to those who need them the most, that no supplies go missing or get wasted. That goes for all of you. If Kuwahara-san says she can't fill your prescription, then you damn better well listen and figure something else out. We're expecting a new shipment of meds tomorrow afternoon. Until then, we make do with what we have. Right. Now, onto our doctors. I will be taking exam bay 1, Todoroki take bay 2, Sakama, you're on bay 3, Midoriya, you're in the OR. As soon as you are done with any emergency operations, take over bay 3 so that Sakama can switch to psychiatric rounds. If psychiatric intervention becomes necessary before you're finished, Todoroki and I will cover Bay 3. Does everybody understand their assignments? Good. ETA is now ten minutes. Break. Izuka didn't waste any time rushing to the ER and scrubbing in. You ready for this? Yoshida asked as they pushed into the OR. Nobody is ever ready for this, Izuka said grimly. We don't know what is coming through those doors. However, statistically speaking, the most common emergency surgeries after traumatic car accidents include craniotomies and other brain surgeries to repair skull fractures and brain bleeds spinal fusions and disectomies and cauterization of internal bleeds. So nothing too difficult, right? Yoshida offered a wan smile. And just think, once we're all done here, we'll likely have some nice easy fractured bones to reset. There is that. Plus I refreshed my cranial anatomy knowledge in biology class this morning, Izuka joked before turning sullen. Let's just hope I don't have to use it. Their pager simultaneously beeped. They're here. Central ER, 2143. What have you got for us? Harada demanded, as one of the volunteers rushed in with the first patient, who he promptly placed on the awaiting gurney. According to his ID, his name is Yasui Chiasa, 32 years old. Severe respiratory distress, suspected, broken ribs, and moderate laceration. He's conscious but not lucid. All right, take him to Bay 1. I've got him, Takahashi called, pressing an oxygen mask to the patient's face as she and the volunteer rolled the gurney. Yasui-san, can you hear me? The patient only groaned in response. I need 300 cc's of lactated ringer stat. The trio quickly vanished into their assigned med bay. Incoming, bay two, Harada called. Nato ran up to the doors with Azuma. An EMT, their probable hero of the day, rushed with a young woman in his arms whom he placed on the nearest gurney. 
Jane Doe, probably in her 20s, but I can't be sure. She's non-responsive, but her breathing and heart rate are stable. Compound tibia fibula fracture in her right leg. The EMT promptly reported. She has a moderate abrasion on the back of her head. I've already controlled the bleeding. Thanks. Ma'am, can you tell me your name? No response. Can you open your eyes for me? Once more, patient didn't respond to Natsuo's question. After waiting a split second, Natsuo began to apply pressure to the patient's fingertip. Her eyes remained shut. Natsuo grabbed the patient's left trapezius muscle and squeezed firmly. The patient jerked their shoulder away. GCS-7, we're taking her straight to CT, Natsuo ordered. Ozma, 100 cc's of iodine contrast. After the patient was wheeled away, the EMT turned toward Harada. We should have one more red tag, four yellows and three greens coming in. The yellows are in two transports while the greens are sharing a third. Thank you, Harada noted down the numbers. Any chance you could stick around? We're extremely short-handed at the moment. Sorry, the EMT shook his head. I wish I could, but I'm on the clock right now. I've already been AWOL for just under an hour, and my captain won't be able to cover me for much longer. I understand, Harada answered. I won't keep you any longer. Thank you for everything. You're a real hero. I couldn't just leave them there. Let me know if they're okay. Takahashi since they should have my number. Of course. Medbay, 1. 21.45. Takahashi checked the oximeter on the patient's finger. He's tachycardic, pulse of 145. Oxygenation is at 79% and isn't rising. She pressed her stethoscope to the patient's chest. No breast sounds on the left side. Probably a pneumothorax. We'll need to do an ultrasound. Unbutton his shirt. All right, here you go, Sensei. Umeda handed over the ultrasound and gel. Sorry, this is going to be cold. Takashi warned before squirting the gel onto the patient's chest. The man groaned slightly in protest. I really don't see any lung sliding on the left side there. I was right. It's a left side pneumothorax. We're going to have to aspirate. I'm fairly certain we're out of plural drainage kits, Umeda interrupted. What do you want me to do? Give me four cc's of 2% lidocaine, an 18-gauge cannula, and a spinal tap kit stat. On it. Sir, the reason you're having trouble breathing is that your left lung collapsed. Basically, the trauma from the crash caused air to leak into the space between your lung and chest wall. We're going to insert a needle into this space to release the air and allow your lung to expand, which should return your breathing to normal. I will use local anesthetic to numb the area beforehand. You should only feel a pinch. Do you understand? Yes, the patient wheezed. Do I have your consent to proceed? Yes. All right, let's begin. Takahashi pulled on a pair of nitrile gloves before sterilizing the area with an alcohol swab and placing a drape over the procedure area. I'm going to insert the needle with the lidocaine now. You'll feel a small sting. There, done. Now, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go a little deeper with it, okay? The patient grunted in response. As she injected a little bit of the lidocaine, Takahashi slowly moved the needle up and down to release some of the air from the pleural cavity. When she was finished, she filled the cannula with the remaining lidocaine and inserted it at a 90-degree angle into the second intercostal space of the mid-clavicular line. Umeda, make sure the cannula doesn't kink, Takahashi ordered, removing the needle from the tubing. All right, you can attach the three-way tap to the top of the cannula and the 50-milliliter syringe to the tap. Roger that, Umeda responded before proceeding. Everything looks good. All right, have you done a pleural aspiration before? Only once, Umeda admitted. All right, I'm going to walk you through it. All you need to do is slowly and steadily draw the air out with a syringe. Stop once you start to feel resistance. Okay. Umeda took a deep breath before starting to pull the syringe plunger. What do I do if the syringe is full, but I'm still not feeling resistance? Not to worry. I expect that it'll happen several more times. Let me just turn the stopcock here, and then you can detach the syringe and empty the air. Make sure you don't lose any of the lidocaine. Right. Okay, I've reattached the syringe. Rinse and repeat. Central ER, 2149. The EMT had barely left when the next patient was rushed in and dropped on the awaiting gurney. Adachi Ko, 47, he's lost a lot of blood. He was awake when we left the scene but lost consciousness en route. He doesn't have a pulse, and he isn't breathing code blue, Sakuma shouted, before pulling herself under the gurney to begin chest compressions. Michi rushed over, dragging a crash cart with him. Give him one cc epinephrine. We don't have time to establish an IV line, so it'll have to be an intracardiac injection. Michi pulled the requested needle and dosage from the cart before injecting it into the patient's heart. Take over for me while I bag him, Sakuma ordered before switching places with Michi. Harada, leave intake to Kawara and get the patient hooked up to a monitor. Yes, Sensei, Harada shouted. He's bagged. 
Sakuma reported. Harada, are you done? Almost. Give me a second here. You handle the bag. Looks like fine, V-Fib. Michi, give him another dose of the epinephrine. I'm going to start up the AED. Takahashi pulled the yellow plastic AED case from the crash cart as Michi re-injected the patient. Watch your hands. I'm cutting off his shirt, Takahashi warned before proceeding to slice through the cotton. Damn it. We're going to need to shave him. I'll do my best to work around you, but you'll have to pause CPR for a few moments. Just give me a heads up. An ominous crack accompanied the next compression. And I definitely just broke this guy's rib. Good. That means you're doing it right. Better a broken rib than dead. Takashi replied as she quickly shaved off as much of the patient's chest hair as she could. Pause so I can get the last spot. Michi stopped his compressions. Here, I'll help you attach the pads. Together, the two of them hooked the patient up to a defibrillator. Clear, Takashi ordered, pulling away from the patient. Harada dropped the airbag and took a large step back. The patient's body contracted with the electric shock. Still nothing on the monitor. Resume CPR and breaths. All right, Michi, get the next dose of epi. Done. Clear? The body convulsed again. Shit, he's asystolic. Resume CPR. He's not going to recover, Harada noted sadly. We have to try. Even with CPR, we have 15 minutes from asystole to brain death due to oxygen deprivation. Takahashi-sensei, swap with me. I'm... I'm not gonna be able to keep doing this much longer. Right. One, two, three, swap. Michi breathed a sigh of relief and rubbed his arms. Two minutes later, Harada swapped in. Still nothing. Give his last dose of epi, Takahashi ordered. The team continued to swap out with each other, giving additional doses of epinephrine every three minutes. By the time fifteen minutes had passed, Michi was doing compressions once more. Michi, it's been fifteen minutes, I'm calling it. Michi froze, looking like he was about to argue, before nodding slowly and climbing off the body. Time of death, 2213. Imaging room, 2147. Ready to lift her into the machine. On the count of three. One, two, three, lift. Natsu and Azuma heaved the patient onto the CT scanner. All right. Natsu firmly ran a finger from the bottom of the patient's foot to the top. The toes reflexively fanned out. Positive Babinski, so there's that. Let's see what the CT can tell us. Natsu started up the machine and an image loaded onto the monitor. Shit. We need to get her to Izuku now. OR, 2149. Epidural hematoma. It's small, only 20 cubic centimeters and 15 centimeters thick, Yoshida announced. Caused by a skull fracture tear in the middle mengenial artery. But she's a GCS-7, so we need to operate. A craniotomy, then, Izuku concluded. Do we know anything about the patient? Young Jang Do, Yoshida shrugged. I'm guessing she weighs around 55 kilograms. I've given her the loading dose of propofol and hooked her up to the 330 milligram infusion set to 60-minute infusion rate. Okay, secure her head to prevent movement while I shave her head, Izuku ordered, selecting a razor from the surgical cart. It's a shame, Yoshida commented idly as Izuku began to shave the patient's hair. Her hair was so long and pretty. Well, if we do this right, she'll hopefully have a chance to grow it back, Izuku responded. All right, done. Hand me the marker. Here you are. Izuka took the marker from Yoshida and drew a large arch over the location of the hematoma. This is going to be a long procedure. What kind of music are you in the mood for? Hmm, Yoshida pondered. Classic K-pop. 21st century. What do you take me for, a heathen? Of course 21st century. Sounds good. Hand me a scalpel before going to turn it on. Izuka cut along the mark, pulling back the soft tissue to expose the patient's skull. Just as he finished the incision... Blackpink's shutdown began playing on the overhead. I will never get over how cool the human body is, Yoshida exclaimed upon returning. Well, at least you know you're in the right field. Hand me the drill. Very carefully, Izuka drilled four small holes in the patient's skull, creating the shape of a square. Bone saw. Here you go, boss. Yoshida handed the saw over. Izuka began sawing between each of the holes. Be ready with a sterile container for the skull fragment once I remove it. I already have one prepared. Yoshida responded. Izuka hummed in acknowledgement and continued to saw. A while after, he freed the section of bone, dropping it into the container Yoshida provided. Look at that. Wow, Yoshida whistled. Now that's nastier than it looked on the scans. It's no wonder she's a GCS-7. That clot must be putting a ton of pressure on her brain. Luckily, we can fix that. Suction. Izuka gingerly placed the suction tip against the large blood clot and began the painstaking process of removing a hematoma. It took well over an hour before the clot was fully removed. 
Damn it, she started to bleed again. Cardery pen? Trade you, Yoshida exchanged the pen for the suction tool. Izuka gently placed the pen to the bleed, using an electric current to seal the wound. Okay, that should do it. Her bleeding should be fully stopped, so we should be able to replace the skull flap without a drain. We'll just need to keep a close eye on it for a few days. All right, I'll make sure the nurses know. Thanks. Hand me the anchors and screws one at a time. Izuka put the bone fragment back in place and attached it to the rest of the skull with the metal anchors and screws. Page Natsuo to come get his patient. All that's left is to suture her up. Got it, Yoshida sighed. And then let me guess, clean up duty? For both of us, Izuka nodded grimly. I'm sure we'll barely have enough time to grab a protein bar and a cup of coffee before our next procedure. I bet we all could use some coffee by now. Maybe I should page Matsumura-kun about starting a pot? He's probably busy, but you can ask. Matsumura-kun, any chance for some coffee? Yoshida spoke into her pager. A minute later, her pager beeped with a reply. I got you, girl. Did you hear that, Zuku-sensei? I heard in good timing, too. We're done here. Izuku stepped back from the patient. Just then, there was a knock on the OR door. We're done. You can come in, Izuku replied. Not so pushed the door open. Everything go well? Yep, Izuku replied with exhausted cheer. Just keep an eye on her to make sure she doesn't start bleeding again in the next couple days. The hematoma was worse than it initially looked on the scan, so I can't say for sure what her prognosis will be. We'll take her off the anesthetic, and you should have a better idea if or when she wakes up. Thanks, man. Natsu smiled grimly. Just giving you a heads up. Turns out that Takashi's red tag has significant abdominal bleeding, and will need surgery stat. We've already put it off for too long due to understaffing. Shit, Izuku cursed. Is anyone available to sanitize the OR? Yoshida and I need food and coffee if we aren't going to screw this up. Azuma-san can handle it, Natsu responded. All of our patients are stable now. Thanks, Yoshida breathed a sigh of relief. How many patients do you have? Our Jane Doe here, who was our red tag. A young woman with a closed arm fracture and a moderate concussion, and an older gentleman with some minor abrasions and a broken wrist. That's not as bad as I feared, Izuku offered. I had it easy. Sakuma's red tag was DOA. Well, shit. Anyways, go change and grab your food. The OR will be ready for you in 15. Thanks again, Izuku smiled at Natsuo before pushing out of the OR. Waiting room, 1150. The entire waiting room was awash in the din of discontent patients by the time Izuku arrived. We've been waiting here for four hours, a woman cried, gently bouncing a distressed infant in her arms. Karu-chan needs to see a doctor. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, Matsumura placated the woman. As I've said before, we're currently dealing with a mass casualty event. All of our doctors are currently tied up with patients in imminent danger of losing their lives. While Karu-chan's health is very important, he is not in any immediate danger. What about that one? The woman pointed wildly at Izuku. Hey, it's a doctor, one man shouted. I'm next in line, another chimed in. No, you aren't. We were here first. Well, I'm sicker. Shut the fuck up. You're fine. My sister's way worse off. Everybody, please calm down, Izuku shouted. The crowd hushed. I just got out of a three-hour brain surgery and am stopping to grab a cup of coffee so that I'm alert for my next emergency procedure. We will see you as soon as we are able, but you must understand. We are a volunteer operation. The doctors are pulling 12-hour shifts for no pay so that you can receive care. We are severely understaffed and are dealing with patients who are dying. We've already lost one person tonight, so please... Please be patient and kind to your doctors. We are struggling, too. I know it is hard to wait when you and your family feel sick, but know that we are doing the absolute best we can. If you want to help speed things up, I know that we could use some volunteers to help with the basic tasks like cleaning, sorting through patients' personal belongings, changing sheets, and making food. Anybody who is healthy and willing to help can come talk to me, Matsumura announced. Thanks, Izubin. Your coffee is behind the desk. We really need a designated staff room, Izuka responded tiredly. With what space? Matsumura snorted. Maybe we could work out some kind of deal with the Internet Cafe. It's not a bad idea. I'll bring it up with Takahashi-sensei. Izuku nodded, taking a deep sip of his coffee before heading back into the makeshift ER. Hey, Izuku. Hmm? You're going to be a great hero. Central ER. Midnight. Hey, Harada-san, what's the situation? Izuku asked the weary-looking nurse. Currently, we have one red tag. Your abdominal bleed in room one. Came in with a pneumothorax, which Takahashi-sensei treated, then started displaying signs of blood loss with a distended abdomen. We've been transfusing him while we waited for you. 
There are four yellow tags of various severity. The worst off is patient in room three with some sort of spinal injury. We have a couple of compound fractures, but it looks like those will have to wait for the next shift at this point. We were able to get in contact with a handful of people who agreed to come in early. Should be here in a little over an hour. We sent our three green tags to the waiting room. Now that the Jane Doe is out of surgery, we'll ask somebody to identify her. That's great news. Speaking of the waiting room, I got Matsumura to assemble a bunch of volunteers to help out with the basic housekeeping tasks. Hopefully we'll get enough people to take the edge off. And that is why you are a resident genius, Harada sighed. That'll be a huge help. Now, if you're done with your coffee, go have your abdominal bleed patient sign his consent forms. Harada pressed a patient chart into Izuka's chest. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, Izuka sighed, pushing back the curtain to bay one. Izuka glanced down at the chart. Yasui Chiyasa-san. Yes, the middle-aged man on the left-most bed responded. I'm Adoria sensei and I'm going to be your surgeon today. I want to go over the procedure and some paperwork with you, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, the man coughed lightly. Sorry, my breathing still isn't completely normal. I see you had a needle aspiration earlier for a pneumothorax. It's not uncommon to feel some effects for a few hours after the procedure. Now, essentially what we're going to do is an exploratory surgery in your abdomen to locate and cauterize any bleeds. Cauterize? You're going to burn me? Not exactly. We use a small electrical current to heat the tissue and seal off the wound. You'll be under general anesthesia, so you shouldn't feel any pain during the procedure. The big issue is we won't know exactly where you're bleeding until we start the procedure. Depending on the location and severity of the bleed or bleeds, we may elect to remove the whole or parts of some of your organs. My organs? I understand that this can be scary to hear, and we will do everything we can to prevent that outcome, but it is a possibility. Which organs could I lose? We can't really say for sure. The liver tends to be the most commonly damaged organ from abdominal trauma, but it's not one we can remove. If your liver has sustained severe damage, we will need to talk about next steps after the surgery. Another area of concern, due to its location, is the spleen. And it isn't unheard of for surgeons to need to remove very small sections of intestine in cases like these. Please know that it is highly unlikely that we will need to remove any of your organs, but we do need to inform you of the possibility. I understand, but that's... The man sighed. Do I really need the surgery? Aren't the transfusions enough? Sir, without the operation, you will bleed out. You need it to survive. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Look, I can't say things will go perfectly, but this surgery, while significant, is relatively low risk. You face a greater risk if you refuse treatment than if you proceed with the operation. All right, I get it. I'll get the operation. I'm glad to hear that. Now I need to go through these consent forms with you, certifying that we talked about the risks of the operation that you are electing to proceed with full understanding of these risks. Just show me where to sign. I want to get this over with. Izuka handed the papers to the patient and pointed at the signature line. All right. A nurse is going to stop by to prep you for your surgery and administer anesthesia. I'll check in with you on the other side. Thanks, Midoriya-sensei. Izuka walked out of the bay, pulling the curtain shut behind him as he did. It was time to scrub in. OR. 1.30. And done, Izuka sighed, wiping his brow. Looks like he only had one major bleed. He'll be happy when he walks away with all his organs, Yoshida laughed. Anyways, I'll start to clean up here if you want to change and take the patient back to bay one. Thanks, you're an angel, Izuka smiled at his friend before rushing to the changing room to divest himself of his scrubs. Hey, Zuku, Nato poked his head in. Just change into your civvies. Shift one is here to relieve us. Oh, thank all might, Izuka breathed out a sigh of relief. This was the shift from hell. You're telling me. Do you want to lift a UA? I won't say no if you're offering. Great, I'll be waiting in the central ER. Thanks, Natsuo. Izuka wasted no time taking a quick shower and changing into sweats. He grabbed his bag from his locker and made his way to meet Natsuo. Izukun, I heard you had a rough night. Ido Jinchiro greeted cheerily as Izuka entered. Izuka just glared. Since you seem so eager to foist your cleaning duties off on Michi, why don't you clean the OR? We just did an exploratory surgery for electrocauterization, and there's plenty of blood to share. See if I ever offer you my mighty tower discount again, Ito huffed, acknowledging the irony. Well, I guess I'm off to the OR. Izuka turned toward the nurse's station in the center of the room where Obi Kozui, the shift one head nurse, was shuffling through paperwork. Hey, Obi-san, Izuka greeted. Do you have an update before I go? She gave a slight hop in surprise, her kangaroo mutation quirk making the jump go higher than it normally would. Hey, Midoriya-sensei. Thanks for your effort tonight, she said cheerily. 
Thanks to you, we don't have any more red tag patients. Our Jane Doe was identified by one of her friends as Ogawa Minako, special education teacher. She hasn't woken up yet, but she's showing increased brain activity, which is a good sign. I'm really glad to hear that, Izuku said, relieved. Could you check in with my abdominal bleed patient when he wakes up and let him know that I'll come see him tonight? I promised I'd check in with him, but he hasn't woken up yet. No problem, and you don't need to worry about us. We've managed to treat all of our non-surgical crash patients, and the only surgeries left are a couple of compound fractures, which Umara-sensei can knock out in a couple of hours. We're already starting to work on our patient backlog, and we'll be able to take the hospital off bypass in the next few hours. Thanks, Obi-san. Oi, Zuku, I'm leaving now if you still want that ride. Coming, Izuku jogged after Natsuo. Bye, Obi-san. They quickly reached the car, and Izuku slid into the front seat with practice ease. Only a few moments later, Natsuo was pulling out of his illegal parking spot in an alley and onto the main street. Ugh, Aizawa-sensei has been getting on my case about working late, so I'm going to need to sneak back into the dorms tonight. Natsuo frowned. Are you going to be all right? Should be. Aizawa usually keeps watch in the common room. I'm wearing dark clothes and I left my bedroom window open, so it should be easy enough to climb the tree outside and slip in. You had a long night, don't do anything stupid. I won't, Izuku promised. But you know better than anyone that I can't cut back on my hours at the clinic, and I can't tell Aizawa why it's so important that I work late at my totally legal part-time internet cafe job, so this is what I'm left with. You could quit hero school and join me as a med student. No one expects med students to sleep anyways. We're all too busy studying. Nice try, but I'm going to be a hero. I know, not to aside. Is it bad that I sometimes wish you didn't develop your quirk? Like, I'm proud of you just the way that you are, but it would be nice to have a quirkless hero. And I think you really could have done it. You know, you're the only one that's ever said that to me. I wish I'd heard that years ago. Mizuka teared up. And I may have a quirk now. But in many ways that matter, I'll always be quirkless. I'll always be a part of the community by virtue of our shared experiences. And I will always be a hero for people like us. Sure, I won't bring the kind of mainstream quirkless representation that a fully quirkless hero could, but I can still be a hero for our community. I want kids like you and me to see my red shoes and know that there is a hero that is safe. I know, Natsuo smiled. You're going to be better than everyone who came before. And one day, when some kid asks if a quirkless person can be a hero, you'll be there to say yes and to support them. I hope so, Izuka smiled. Well, on that somewhat heavy note, we're here. Good night, Natsuo. Get some sleep. You too, don't get caught. I won't. Izuka unbuckled his seatbelt and made his way onto UA's campus. He didn't run into anyone as he headed back to the dorms, scaled the tree by his window, and slipped into his room. Before long, Izuka was snuggled in his bed, eyes heavy with sleep. Tonight wasn't so bad after all, he murmured into his pillow as he drifted off into his dreams. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 3 of Deku Dio. Chapter 4 will be up next. I hope you all are enjoying this still, and as always, thank you so much for listening.